Um, I'm going to struggle to be critical about this one because I think it is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Completely nuts. Hello and welcome to the Artist channel. My name is Byron and today we're going to be having a look at a ridiculously high quality standard at a painting event that I attended and ran recently. Well, actually it was a gaming event, but the painting standard was just ridiculous. I won't go on about it too much. Um, there are some more details at the end of the video on why this video has been edited by me and also about a competition that we're going to be doing that we're going to let you, the viewers, uh, have the final say on who wins uh, one of our paint sets and one of our texture palettes. So stick around to the end for that. And until then, just enjoy my subpar editing and some way, way, way over par armies because they were absolutely nuts. Have any of you ever seen a standard this high at an event before? It was off the charts. It was absolutely gorgeous. Let's jump in. All right, here we are for another Artist Hopeless judgmental session on what is, again, a insane set of armies. Absolutely ridiculous. So let's start with something a little bit quirky. So this is Mark Wildman's Halfling Force. This stuff looks like okay, and then you get in and you see the faces. There's some obvious aspects on the, the general parts of it that need some more work, but my god, the character in these faces is insane. Look at him. He's got little vampire teeth. Right down to their little tiny check jumpers. Got Van Helsing chilling out here. So the army is, you know, overloaded on character, but what needs a little bit of work is areas like this, which is sculpting, which makes it a bit harder. Um, but, you know, some more gentle highlights here. And I think maybe the black wash in the recess was a bit too much. But just some striking lines on those feathers are what I do on him to really pull him up. Oh, Russ is helping with an army display over there. Doing the tech. Right, next. This is Ben the Smith's um, army. You might know him on Twitter. Comes with its own lighting rig. It sounds, again, oodles of character. So, it's meant to be rusty, old, undead KO. And that comes with a load of stuff. So, physically, it's fine for the texture to be built up, with weathering and things like that. But I think I would like to see on this some sh super shiny aspects on the edges. You can use weathering pencils for that. You can use some stippling, but some little glints poking through here and there, I think would really, really bring this army up. Obviously though, overall impression is nuts. Got lighting, looks good in good lighting, bad lighting, the works. Um, I'm gonna struggle to be critical about this one because I think it is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Completely nuts. So look at that. Just beautiful. This is absolutely packed with incredible freehand weathering. I mean, just, just look at the little glowy tokens and charms, whatever they are. Just brilliant. The freehand is nuts. Look at his nose poking through, handmade banner. Character is everywhere, conversions are off the hook. I really like the basing. I think it's very effective. Hours has gone into a lot of aspects of this. I think the army's been done over a fairly long time, so some aspects of it are done at a higher level than others. But it's very hard to pick any particular aspects that you know, need improvement or something like that. The level is extremely high, it's been years in the making, and the more time you spend looking at it, the more you realise that everyone has just had the same amount of TLC and incredible attention to detail. Never mind all the building that went in beforehand. Absolutely nuts. <laughs> really is absolutely beautiful. So gorgeous. Love it. So I don't know what I changed on that one. I just think it's amazing. Look at it. Fairly muted scheme, but I'm okay with that. Next, Pete the Wargamers. So, you know, 
we have to still, even though it's heat, we have to acknowledge just how good the conversion work is here and the fact of how smooth it looks. All those bellies just work. There's green stuff work everywhere that we're not going to notice because it's been done to such a solid level. He's used the Pro Curl paints from Monument to paint this army up and it's got a very consistent matte finish. He's also made the most of the texture on these models, which I'm really glad about. A little bit of dry brushing on the go there and then highlighting afterwards. He's not used washes, but he's still, the textures really come out. The scheme is great. I think this would benefit from a few final snappy sharp edge highlights on the blades, just to make them really pop, especially these guys. So that's what I change on this. But really, really effective. This character everywhere. He's done it fast and you know, I, I, I talk about spending hours and hours more but that wasn't really the aim of the army so that's not the feedback that I'm going to give. I think with an efficient hour or two, the final bright edge highlight on the green is absolutely where I'd go with that one. Next, from Alex Ghostarm, whose event I attended recently, which is the one where I did the, uh, the other judging of armies. Um, video. This is a heavily converted Two Kings themed Stormcast army, so this isn't Cetra, it's a Prime. Loads of bits have been salvaged. There are Easter eggs everywhere. Look at his ghosty stuff pouring out the lantern. Yes, that's a little face in there. Just brilliant. Absolutely love it. There's, there's TLC all over this, so I can't can't pick on anything to do with the character, so let's pick on the technical execution. So I think the washes can have been done slightly more smoothly, or the thing that I do with my contrast is to fiddle with them once they're on, and I think that's the thing that I'd pick on for this army, because a load of aspects of it are super neat, and then the washes in certain areas on the cloaks kind of pull it back, so either more lamy medium in there, or more control with them, that's why I'd go with that one. This is badass. So this army, the individual units just in a the picture, they look a little bit out of place and a little bit mad on its board. You begin to see exactly why and how it makes sense. So I love it. Really clever use of 3D printing parts. The board makes it work, it really does. I love the basing, I think it's probably a bit more mighty. Some people might not, but I think it is out of this world. I would go for sharper highlights on the red for this. It's difficult to do that without going up to orange, and that might not be what matters after, but I think that and then things like dotting the rivets on the gash, um, particularly on your key characters, pulling them out would be great. I really like this guy, and the white on him stands out so much and, and you know, just works with the flowers on the base and stuff like that. Um, same for these banners. So. I think the, the white is doing a lot of work here. Um, yeah, maybe just taking things up a slight other notch with the rivets and stuff like that would be a good idea. But it's gorgeous, you know, this is, this is a crowd pleaser. A lot of them here are crowd pleasers, but this just works. And the, the blue, again, Matt's picked some, uh, some hardcore divisive choices and I think they've all really, really worked in his favor once he gets on the display board. Tom's Army, saw this one last time, and I spoke about it needing some terrain behind it. And he's picked Coral, 3D printed Coral, which works so well. This is great, the theme is great, the basing is solid. The little Nemo fish, the clownfish are of course going to pull attention, and then they echo the colours on the base. Everything's a little bit piratey. I don't know if Tom wants to spend more time on it at this point, I'm sure he spent ages on it, but some things like smoothing out the muscles and maybe varnishing down the glossier of the washes is something that I would consider going in and doing. Um, yeah, well, uh, well worth doing in my opinion if he does want to spend some more time on it. So that's what I picked for that one. And we've got Mr. Hewitt's Gargans. Sorry, dude. Um, these are amazing. Just oodles of character, extremely smart conversion work. This is my favorite, look at that pose. That is so natural, it's like a character piece. Absolutely wonderful. Tom's kept the scheme fairly muted on these. He's not quite finished, so that's the obvious thing I'd say, you know, certain areas are, are just flat color and could be highlighted up. Um, so that, that's the obvious thing, but I like the withheld color scheme. I think it takes discipline to do something like that. So really, really amazing. 
so I know mine's, mine's become like Battle roll on Twitter if you want to follow Tom. Yeah, celebrities again. So this is Kiryas Army. I think this is great. He's done it fast. And I think for me, the thing that I'd want John to work on is just little cute neat steps because he's got all the character his conversion work is pretty inspired actually which is really uh, a bit screwed up but it works <laughs> it's, it's mental we've got mushrooms growing out of eyes we've got all that type of stuff so i think a few key sharp highlights here and there scratches edge highlights stuff like that would go really long way and help things help make things look shiny or stuff like that or bring attention to little basing aspects or cool characterful pieces that would otherwise get lost or go unnoticed so um yeah sharp highlighting steady hands work in a couple of places i think would absolutely be worth doing matt's army next very disciplined color scheme very disciplined army technically done extremely well as well um I mean, check out that freehand. That's nuts. Absolutely nuts. This army works so well. I love the basing, how he's, he's dialed it back, he's not gone too far. On these, the thing I'm going to pick on actually is um, I'd probably varnish over the transfers to try and make them less glossy. Because they do a lot of work as far as bringing colour into the army, but uh, they do stand out with a different finish. It's all good. So we've seen this one before, and I'm going to say the same thing again. It's beautiful. The, the decisions made on it as far as colour and stuff have been done really, really, really well. But having Nurgle and not making the most of the texture on the models, I think is a real shame. So just like, this is convenient, you see these textured parts here. Not all of them, not loads, but they have been picked out. That goes a long way, I think. Andy could have done that on these, but because of the way that he's blended and airbrushed, they've kind of been lost a bit, so a bit of dry brush work on those would be good. And you could do it now, you just have to redo the, the yellow bits and stuff like that, the boils afterwards, but I do think a little bit of highlight would work really, really nicely. All right, so we got Tim's next. Tim is a technical execution master, he's a young painter as well, I think he's 21. My god, is this good. Just look at it. So, he's, he's, he's good at picking a scheme, following it. These are done in a Ankal Giraldes scheme. Uh, he's chosen the bone, I think he's got some Haki Salam from Infinity. But the colour scheme is nuts, it's perfect, it all works, it's all absolutely wonderful. Look at the gold aspect here. Just crazy. Like, my god. So good. Really. Really, really, really tasty. I think for me, it, it's hard to make them look good, but some work on the ghosts and the ghostly aspects be what I do. This one works a little bit more. Um, I, I really struggled. I don't know what I would do to make them better. Maybe kind of treat them as a piece of cloth or something like that and have darker and lighter sections. But um, the technical level of this army is absolutely mental. You should be so proud of it and I have no idea how many hours went into it. So nuts. These armies are alright, right? I don't envy the job of a judge. No, it's grim. All of them are so good. Just nuts. So that concludes the rather epic walk around. Phenomenal work. Everyone should be amazingly proud. Quite a few armies didn't make the cut, uh, which we feel bad about, but there were so many nice ones that some had to just about not make it in. So amazing work from a lot of people, including people in this room who aren't featured on this table. All right, so we are done. Um, you know, I said it enough in the video. I'll continue saying it now. I haven't ever seen a painting standard that high in my life at an event. And I've attended some much larger events. So in terms of the amount of armies that were at that quality uh, and had that amount of effort put in, the ratio was ridiculous, you know. 35 out of, uh, well, re really, really close to 50% of the people in attendance had gorgeous, gorgeous armies. The majority of people had, you know, way above solid armies. And then quite a high proportion of people had just, you know, ridiculously outstanding armies, both for, um, you know, technical execution and quite a few of them for 
just going above and beyond the display boards or general thematic stuff or turning up with your own musical display, you know, all that type of stuff. So yeah, we're absolutely like blown away by the standard of the painters. One of the things we're going to be trying to do more on the channel going forward, um, I'll chat a few about a few changes that we're thinking of at the moment, is you want to be giving props to people who are putting an effort that maybe, you know, we think could have a few more people following them and learning from their work or seeing their beautiful work or stuff like that. So please do follow all of the artists. They were linked in the video. I'll make sure to link them below now in the description as well. Um, maybe I'll do it in the timestamps. We'll see if I can work that out. Um, but yeah, uh, as has already been alluded to, uh, Ronan is no longer with us. We wish him all the best. Some of you may get to see some of the things he's working on in the future. Um, I can't say anything more than that, but you know, we wish him all the best. It was great working with him. Uh, he fixed a lot of things that you guys probably didn't even realize, including, you know, me literally saying the name of the wrong paint and him squeaking that in seamlessly in our audio. So God knows what we're going to do without him. We'll work it out. It'll be fine. Anyway, um, do let us know what you would like to see more of on the channel coming up in the near future. So would you like us to return to, you know, like here is a big, huge tank. We're just going to use Series D. Let's see what we can do. Uh, do you want to see, you know, more Star Wars Legion stuff? That went down quite well. Um, lovely models to paint as well. Uh, do you want to see us taking a key character model or, you know, um, you know, one of, the, one of the famous, the big guys like Archeon or Mortarion or a Greater Demon or something like that and painting that? Or do you want us to pick a technique like, um, I don't know, or a color, uh, like we've done painting gold or stuff like that? Or do you want something that's, you know, really uh, dialed sh straight back and educational and is like a beginner's guide to glazes or something like that. We would love your suggestions. And as I said at the beginning, what we're going to let you do is whether you have a suggestion or not, please do scroll down to the bottom at this point, the comments, and uh, just give a thumbs up to whichever one you think is the best suggestion. The one that has the most thumbs up is the one that will win. And uh, yeah, that's how we're going to work it out. And they will get to pick S, M or D. We'll give them a set of those and we'll also give them a texture palette. So uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts. Uh, go down, vote. Have your say and um, we'll, you know, the ones that come second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever, we'll, we will bear that in mind as well. All the comments will get read, but the ones that have been up liked the most, uh, we will pay particular attention to in terms of stuff coming up in the near future. That's it. Um, there will be some painting content returning. We're working on quite a few exciting things that I'm really looking forward to bringing to you in the near future. Uh, we've been pretty busy in, uh, in terms of project development at Artis Opus, so there's some cool stuff coming up that you've probably or possibly seen popping up around the internet anyway and uh, hopefully you'll see more of that soon and some of it will be from my own hand so I can't wait to get stuck in with it I've got some really good ideas we might return to a fairly beloved model from the channel that never got finished before I'm sure you can guess which one that is um, although quite a few things haven't got finished uh, we might return to him and give him the mother of all bases before we start painting it I think that's there's a very high likelihood that's the next video that I get working on Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in and for sticking around for a really long intro. Um, I don't have Ronan to edit out this waffly stuff, so um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for all your comments that I'm sure will be forthcoming, and we'll be reading those suggestions super keenly to see what you want to see coming up next from the channel. Cheers.